Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Zero Escape, 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we got the safe ending, which is incredibly tragic. In this episode, as you just saw, at the end of the safe ending, we got a trailer of sorts. And the reason for that is, if we go ahead and look at the endings we've gotten so far, we save our game... You'll notice that we have two endings left, and if we will remember, uh, one of those endings is a dummy ending uh, for the true ending, meaning that we only have one route left to go down, and that is the true ending route. So, without further ado, let us begin the true route of Zero Escape, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. So now that we're finally getting into the last route of the game, there's a lot of stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. First of all, uh, Ace is... Ace turning out to be a pretty bad guy. He's not Zero, probably, but he does seem to be a bad... He is a very bad person from what we've seen. And it's not just in the safe ending that he's a pretty bad guy. You'll remember that in the knife ending and the... Um, why am I grabbing this stuff? I don't need to grab it. You'll remember that in the knife ending and the submarine, we were killed with a knife, obviously. And what knife do you think that would be? If your guess was the knife that the ninth man had that Ace used to kill Clover in the safe ending, then that answer would be correct. So that means that Ace not only killed Clover and uh, Guy X in the uh, safe ending, but also killed pretty much everyone in the uh, submarine ending, as well as killing Lotus and us in uh, the knife ending. In fact, there's even more hinting at this, where uh, during the axe ending, Ace uh, is talking to Lotus, and he's like, uh, Lotus, could you come, uh, look at something, uh, for me? I need to show you something. And then Junpei's like, what the hell, man? Am I not important? And Ace is just like, oh, don't worry, Junpei. Once I show it to Lotus, I'll be sure to show it to you as well. Which is obviously hinting toward the, uh, knife ending, which I think is super cool. And once you play through the game again, that's such a, like, spooky line when you look at it again. Of course, we got an even worse thing there. We got, you know, our arm chopped off with an axe. But, like, still, Ace is a very... is a fairly intimida intimidating villain. But if all of the things that we've seen so far are hinting towards something, it's that Zero probably isn't Ace. I mean, Zero was still talking after Ace had died in the incinerator, so obviously can't be him. Uh, but it also does rule out, like, a good chunk of people. So, uh, if you haven't, if you're experiencing this blind, uh, make your guesses now of who you think Zero could be. Because, you know, there are so, there are a few people it could be, and it's unfortunate if it's any of them, because I don't know about you, but, you know, when I played through this game, over the course of the game, I came to really become attached to this cast of characters here. And I absolutely enjoyed spending time with pretty much all of them. Uh, Ace, before uh, it turns out he was a villain, I thought it was pretty cool, and then afterwards it was interesting to see his, like, the stuff he's doing. Um, like, seeing all of the stuff with context now of, you know, what he's doing during each part of the game. Uh, Sneak is always pretty cool, we barely get to see him throughout the game, but it's awesome to see that he's, you know, he's alive, and... You know, it's really, he has a really cool moment during the safe ending. That was just, that entire thing was so incredibly awesome. Santa, we haven't really seen much of him throughout the game, but we do get, from what little we do get of him, we get some great moments. Like, uh, the, 
I was her Santa Claus scene in the uh, behind door six where he talks about his uh, sister who died nine years ago. And, you know, we have some pretty comical moments like him calling Lotus old and then getting his bones broken. Uh, Clover is a very sad character. I think the axe ending was like one of the last endings I got. So I just really, you know, she was depressed pretty much throughout my entire first playthrough. And it was just sad to watch and then the axe ending you know it made sense you know seeing what she'd gone through but it's still a very chilling and you know cool moment uh junpei i think is probably one of my favorite protagonists in any game ever you know he's funny he's smart he's clever like that junpei versus ace scene uh that might that might be one of my favorite scenes in the entire game it definitely like rivals I know how I met you before, that the I was her Santa Claus scene was like my favorite scene, but the Junpei v Ace scene is also like, it's up there, like, absolutely incredible. Uh, June, uh, we, you know, we get to hang out with her, she's nice, uh, she could be pretty funny um, if you, you know, examine some stuff, but yeah, there is some mystery to her, like, what's going on with her fever and stuff like that. Seven is pretty cool. Uh, you know, you could feel the bond between him and Junpei grow during the safe route. It is... He's always fun to hang around, except when he's being a pervert, but that was like one time, so we're just gonna ignore that. Uh, Lotus, uh, I I remember on my first playthrough, like my when I got my first ending, I wasn't a big fan of her, but as I continued to play the game, I got more and more attached to her and then ninth man isn't really a character because he dies in like the first hour of the game anyways i thought that uh while i'm going through this and picking all of the different options i thought i'd go ahead and explain because when you're playing through this game there are so many different routes and options you can go through to get to the six the main six endings that i decided that uh, it's interesting to see like everyone's thought process when playing through. On my first playthrough, uh, my thought process was I went through door four because I didn't want to you know leave June alone. Then I went through door seven because you know I liked seven and I was suspicious of Lotus. By the way, we're going through door four, and then I went through door one because I forget exactly why. I think it's just because I was like, huh, one door. I don't remember my thought process behind it at all, but anyway, uh, and I got the dummy ending, uh, because there are some things in the escape rooms that you should, uh, get, where if you don't get them, you'll get the axe ending, but if you do get them, you'll get the, either the dummy ending or the true ending, and I got the dummy ending, so I got all of the cool things first. And then the, my second ending that I got on my first playthrough was the safe ending because I just tried to pick the opposite of what I'd picked before. I picked the five door, I picked the eight door because I didn't want to go through the three door because that was dangerous. And then I went with six, I guess, just because uh, I was the like polar opposite of one. And then my third ending that I got was the sub ending. I went through like door four. And then after that, I chose the three door and of course that leads just to the two door and that leads to the sub ending and then i forget what order i got the axe and knife endings in i just looked up a guide for how to get those because i could tell that if i just tried to just trial and error it i probably wouldn't be able to get all of them i would probably accidentally keep getting the same endings over and over again which i have heard stories of people who have played through these games and gotten the same endings over and over again on accident or at least played through this game and done that that's kind of impossible to do in the second and third games but yeah i got the axe and the knife ending and then i finally went back and i got the true ending the reason that i sort of i sort of went in reverse order for this playthrough my idea was obviously the last two endings that i wanted to get were the safe ending and the true ending and the submarine ending technically has some extra information that gives a lot more context to stuff that happens in the true ending. So I thought that I'd go ahead and, since that's technically a, like a third main ending, I thought I'd put that right before 
the safe ending. And then next was just choosing the axe and the knife endings, which uh, in the eight door and the six door, uh, depending on what route you're going on, you'll get different dialogue for those doors. Uh, for the eight door, if you go through door four first, you get a funny little scene where, pausing that for now, uh, we're getting to our first uh, sort of checkpoint. I don't know if that's what it is. Uh, every single time I've gone through this room before, I've decided not to take this bookmark. Why, how about this time we actually take it? And decided to take it. After all, why shouldn't he? Alright, sure, I'll take it. He shoved the thing into his pocket and gave Santa a last confused look. Whew! Man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know. Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they could be they could all betray you, you know. Hope, faith, love, even if you're d even your destiny. What had happened to Santa? Junpei wondered. How did he become such a bitter person? For a moment, they looked at each other. Well, that's not my only reason. What? It's not the only reason I hate the four leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. What, worried, worried about the four horsemen? Nah, come on man, that's just silly. Maybe back in the dark ages that kind of crap scared people, but this is the 21st century. I'm a 21st century guy. By the way, fun fact, I forget if I've mentioned this before, but this game canonically takes place in the year 2027. It has no bearing on the plot at all. It's just a fun bit of trivia. Then why do you hate four so much? Because it's a half-assed number. Not the best or the worst. That's why. What? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass middle number. Santa's explanation made no sense. Junpei was even more confused than before. You play? Play? You mean, like, play the, the stock market? You mean, like, the stock market? No, nah, that's not what I mean. Why the hell would you think that? I mean, yeah, I do stocks too, but... That, this last statement, more or less thrown away by Junpei, by Santa, caught Junpei very much by surprise. You? A stockbroker? Yeah, got a problem with that? No, you just don't look like the type. What Junpei didn't say, of course, was that he didn't think Santa looked smart enough to be a stockbroker. Man, that stuff's just like gambling, you know? All you gotta do is bet on the winning horse. Nothing that hard about it. You sure sound pretty confident. So, are you betting on winning horses? Of course I am. You remember a couple years back when the stock for Cradle Pharmaceuticals shot through the roof? Hey, Cradle Pharmaceutical reference. Stacked a few bills over that if I do say so myself. Uh-huh. Uh-huh was all Junpei could think of. He never even heard of Cradle Pharmaceutical. Fortunately, he was saved quickly from further embarrassment. Hey, how long are you going to stand around wasting time? Stop screwing around. The voice screaming at them from the other room was unmistakably Lotus's. Junpei and Santa looked at each other. The lady has spoken. Santa sighed. We'd better get back before we really piss her off. I don't want her beating me up. And with that, Santa walked off slowly. Hey, wait! We weren't done! He started after Santa, intending to catch him, but... Lotus appeared from the next room, blocking his path. Her posture suggested she was not about to let him pass. There was nothing for it. He had lost. Okay, okay. I'll get back to work, damn it. Her glare suggested that any other choice would not have ended pleasantly for him. Junpei mumbled to himself under his breath and went back to his search. So yeah, obviously Junpei doesn't know uh, what Cradle Pharmaceutical is in this uh, run-through because he's... You know, he's all... He hasn't seen any of that stuff yet. He hasn't learned about it from Santa, and he hasn't learned about it from Seven. Because this is like the very beginning of the run. Uh, by the way, if you choose like, if you choose the technically the correct option, the one about uh, what was it, the gambling? Uh, it's just some like very basic stuff. Like, hey, by the way, did you did you notice the nonary game has to do with the number nine? There are nine people here, and a nine door. And nine numbers on the bracelets. Pretty cool, huh? It's not much, so I just decided that the one referencing Cradle Pharmaceuticals would have been cooler. Uh, 
Anyways, back to talk about routes. Uh, not digital routes, but actual routes. I'll, I'll say route from now on, just because that might get a bit confusing. So the 8 door has a sort of thing with it, where you'll get one of two scenes from Lotus, and one of two scenes from Clover, if you go through either the 4 door or the 5 door. If you go through the 4 door first, uh, if you go through the 4 door and then the 8 door, then uh, you don't really get any good scenes. It's just Junpei calls Lotus old, and then Clover's like, hey, I have something to tell you. Never mind. And you just kind of get nothing from that. Uh, and then if you go through the five door, you of course get mentions of, you know, prosopagnosia and Snake's uh, missing arm, which are heavily necessary for the safe ending, right? And then the sixth door, you know, obviously either Santa talks about the tale of the two Santas or how he was his little sister Santa Claus, depending on either if you're going through the safe ending or the knife ending. You can miss out on talk about Santa's sister if you go through the knife ending first and then just like use the flowchart to jump to straight to the safe ending. So another reason why I like uh, the DS version a bit more because that's kind of forced uh, that you see that scene. But anyways, my point of all this was in order to see all of the scenes, I had to go through the eight, the four door first before going through the eight door and the five door first before going through the eight door and obviously that's required for the safe ending to go through the five door first i decided to make the knife ending route pretty much uh four four eight six so that it like is very close to the safe ending and i decided to make my axe ending route for this lp uh very close to the true ending route where you go through we're going to be going through the same doors it's just we're going to be learning new information Anyways, that's enough of my rambling. I'll be sure to put like timestamps and stuff into the description, so if you just want to see the new information we learn, you can click on that. This fridge is pretty much nostalgic now, although this is going to be the last time we see it, so... Uh, take it in, folks. This one small room. So here's something that we haven't actually done anything with before. Once again, we get up to this conversation. Uh... Okay, they were talking about uh, the sublimation of carbon dioxide and how if it's any lower than 109 degrees, uh, then it'll become a solid. But if it's any higher than negative 109 degrees, it'll turn into a gas. So Santa asks why it doesn't turn into a liquid before turning into a gas or vice versa. What we're going to say is we're actually going to hear them out for once. We're going to say it did strike Junpei as rather odd. It did seem rather odd to Junpei, and he couldn't help but think about it. Jun answered. But it can turn into a liquid. Carbon dioxide turns into liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal pressure, it won't turn into a liquid, right? That's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 and a 212 degrees, so why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? June replied with an answer that stunned both of them. There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well, you could also look at it as, it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Water that freezes at 96 degrees? Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees? Junpei was cold as hell, but this was too interesting to ignore. He did his best to warm up by rubbing his arms and stamping his feet, then put the question to June. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Originally, Ice-9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author, but recently scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice-9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid, but if it's under that, it'll solidify. So you could think of it as a polymorph of HO2, H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? 
but depending on the structure of the crystallization, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying the normal water and this ice nine are like that? Yep. She wasn't finished. Have you heard of the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it, and did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin that was en route to England was, was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Naturally, scientists worldwide wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin and began asking for samples of the seed. A seed is, of course, a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be simple matter. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, nearby samples did as well. It didn't end there. After that day, all glycerin in the world began to crystallize naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like, how do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way we can't sense. Hmm. Junpei was honestly impressed. I'm not sure what happens when you say it was honestly kind of annoyed. I was honestly impressed. It was, in fact, a pretty interesting story. Wow. That's pretty interesting. But, uh, what does that have to do with Ice Nine? To his surprise, it was Santa, not June, who answered. What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice Nine. What happened, I mean. A lot like? That would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees, man, it'd be the end of the world. Junpei felt that Santa might not be treating the idea of the end of the world with a proper concern. At any rate, we're not going to have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. He was right. Junpei shivered. Alright guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. Seriously. I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, alright? We've got to find a way out of here. Santa stomped off, clearly doing his best to pretend that cold wasn't affecting him. Selfish, isn't he? Thought Junpei to himself. Still, Santa was right. It's high time they got back to their search. The story of Ice Nine had him interested, but there had been time to think about that once they'd gotten out of the freezer. Junpei looked at June, nodded, and then resumed his search of the room. So we're learning about a lot of new stuff. It turns out when you're not just a dick who ignores everyone, things kind of work out in the end. Who could have thought? Anyways, set set the bomb down, do all this stuff. Thankfully, since we're on the true ending path, this will be the last time we have to see all this stuff over and over and over again. One thing about the sub-ending is that, uh, in that sort of route, the reason why I went for the four-door is because I wanted to... Wrong button. I wanted to sort of tell this story because, uh, you'll remember I mentioned that first I was thinking of you know, going through the five door before doing all that stuff, but then I decided against it. The reason for that is that I feel like it makes a lot more of a compelling story if I actually, if I went through the four door, because the whole thing about Junpei going through the three door, uh, it's mentioned that the reason that he wanted to go through the door is June, and so I feel like it's best, it, w it made like the most sense narratively if I went and decided to go through door four first um, before going through door three because you know the whole thing about Junpei wanting to constantly stick by June like every step of the way just made the most sense to me uh, and then of course with the safe ending you need to go through the five door to get that because you know when you go through the five door you get the information about like a bunch of different stuff that is absolutely critical for the for the safe ending, like, you know, knowing th where the ninth man's bracelet is and stuff like that. These past few videos have been quite long in terms of, you know, uh, you know, the, the length of the runtime. 
But I think that's fitting because we're getting towards the end of the game here. I genuinely think next week we will be done with this game. Which is super exciting to have finished this LP. Because this is probably one of my longest LPs to date. Because my current longest LP is episode 30, is uh, 38 episodes with Ace Attorney. Or 39, I think. And while I don't think this will be that long, I think it will get quite close. I think we're going to get like 36 episodes or 37 or somewhere close to that range. Speaking of video run times, I think it's about time we cut this one right here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, in the next episode, we'll hopefully learn some more information because we learned about the weird ice stuff in this one. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!